Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Devil Row Committee of Pro Wrestling. Presented by the Idiot Radio Network. Operating a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling. With guest interviews, news, results, and much more. Now here's your host, Stephon Devil. And we are back. Stephon Devereaux and the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Wrestling fans, music fans, Devereaux fans. Yes, I know I have to. Thank you. I appreciate that. But welcome to the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Angry Kids Radio. Excuse me, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio Network. I appreciate everyone joining me this afternoon. And uh, welcome to the first Real Football Sunday of the year. But we're not going to talk about football today. We are going to talk about professional wrestling. And we're going to talk to a very lovely young lady who has a hit on her hands. And uh, I don't know if she believed it when I told her the first time, but pretty sure she's believing it now. But we'll have Natalie Kay here on the Devereux Committee a little bit later on. But let's get into the news of professional wrestling. Okay, so, you know my favorite tagline of all time. It was given to me by a professor of mine years ago. And he said, Lester, never out. Whatever you want to call yourself, it's all about the money." The world where revolves around money. Now, I just destroyed my voice to do that, but I did it for you. But that's what he used to tell me. It's all about the money. Now, if it's all about the money, then we have a problem here. Well, not we as the fans. The WWE got a problem here. The WWE got a problem. Yes. The WWE has a problem because the numbers are back for all in. And what these guys were able to accomplish just by selling out the building, that's one thing. Just by putting on a great match after match after match, it's another thing. But you know what they did? And the house, man, the house, the house alone, almost a half a million. 458 thousand dollars was made on that gate that night. 458 thousand dollars on one wrestling event that wasn't promoted by a major company that wasn't promoted by a promoter who, let's say, rock star. Nothing against you, Billy Corgan. You're a good dude. But this thing was promoted by some wrestlers. Four wrestlers. Five, I think. Anyway, don't matter. Wrestlers. Pro wrestlers. And they drew almost a half a million dollars. Like I said, it's all about the money. Now let's take it a step further. Now that was just on the gate. They were also on pay-per-view. Fight Network, I believe. I got to see it on my little app. But over one million dollars, one million dollars in receipts. This thing, and once they're done with the merchandise and so forth, this is going to this is going to end up being over two million dollars when this is all said and done. Over $2 million, this thing is going to gross when it's all said and done. And this is not a major promotion. These are just stars who are not aligned with any major promotion. A couple indies here and there and the major promotion overseas, but they're really not aligned with the major promotion. The only major promotion in the United States of America is the WWE. That's it. Ring of Honor is nice. Impact, yeah, what? They're actually getting better. I did. We talked about this a few weeks ago. 
But these guys are not really aligned with anyone but themselves. So imagine, imagine what they can do. We'll talk about that in a second. What I want to ask you, what I want to know right now, myself, and I'm, I know you know, you, you deep down inside, you're asking yourself this question too. Will they take this momentum and go to the WWE? Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. It's a good question. Huge for this industry right now. Because these guys are in line. They can write their own check. Vince is going to land on the table. These guys can do that right now. Bad things. When you do situations like that, when you go to the WWE, now you're under their control. The only one who really has anything to benefit off of this is Cody. Because he can go back to using Cody Rhodes. But let's be honest. Does he need it anymore? We already know who he is. And that's what's making his case even stronger. Why? Because wrestling fans know his name. They know it's Cody Rhodes. But they know that the WWE is also finding ways to keep him from using that name. A name that his father made. Famous, not the WWE. So that's the big question. Will they use this opportunity to blow up in the WWE? And I'm not saying blow up in a good way. Because you take this product to the WWE, I will promise you, they will blow it up instantly. You've seen what happened with former Bullet Club members who have made their way to the WWE, what has happened? Yeah, I know, exactly. That brings me to the biggest question of them all. If they decide not to go to the WWE, which I believe they're not going. <laughs> this, made it, this made it, you know, like clear. The statement was made right here. They said, Oh, we can make money off of this. We don't need Vince McMahon to make money. When guys feel that way, when guys feel they can make money without Vince McMahon, and you want to make money in a professional wrestling business, oh, you take advantage of that. Because, see, what happens is, you get guys like this, they'll make as much money as they want over the next five years if they continue on the path that they're on right now, and then they can go to the WWE. Because they made all the money they want. These guys don't get into this business to become superstars. Yeah, they do. I put it like this. Let me say it like this. These guys get in this business to make money. They know in order for them to make money, they have to make a name for themselves. They get to the WWE, they can do this. They can hopefully make a name for themselves That's you know, and stay there and continue to work for them. We've seen the trend of guys who have told the WWE no, guys who have been fired or released from the WWE and have went out on the indie scene and is making money. Most recently, James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth, when before he went to the WWE, he was a he had a good name on the indie scene. Gets to the WWE, he blows up. WWE makes this dumbest mistake by letting him go and he's still just as hot as he was up there but on the indie scene and they see this because he's a great marketer because that's what it takes number two let's take it to us take it a step further they bring him back they bring him back fans go nuts back to what it was before when he was there but then they release him again james ellsworth is booked more than he ever was. He's known more now because he keeps his name out there, and that's what these guys are figuring out. If you can keep yourself relevant, you don't need to make money or need the WWE to make money. 
it's nice to say you were a contracted wrestler. It was it's nice. I, I get it. But a lot of these guys understand that as long as they're relevant, as long as they keep themselves relevant, they are going to forever make money in professional wrestling. They can write their own check. The females have done it, and they're still doing it. These guys are figuring it out now. This is how it used to be done, going to territories. These guys are, they're creating their own territories by doing what they're doing. And that's why I truly believe, brings me to that point, the elite will not sign with the WWE. The elite, the elite will compete with the WWE because the blueprint's there. They see it. They see it. Now, two things can happen here to help this process along of being able to compete with the WWE on that, that national stage because they've proven that they can draw. No. This is what they need. This is what they need. You get the elite. Let's say someone's sitting back and seeing these results, seeing the footage, enjoyed the show thoroughly. He's a wrestling fan from the United States, and he has a lot of money. He's currently airing on one of his channels. I think he has two, but he's currently airing professional wrestling on his channel. Japanese professional wrestling. New Japan professional wrestling. Imagine if they can get this guy to sit down and talk to him. Show them, show him their plan. Because this is what he does. You know, he loves sitting down and talking to people. He loves, he likes when they present their offer. (laughs) But I'm talking about the man himself, Mark Cuban. Could be president of the United States one day, the way he's talking. But I'll go and talk to him right now before he even make a decision on trying to run for president. Because you get Mark Cuban involved with something like this, he has the marketing, he has the the tools, the tools, the capabilities, the platforms that you need to make this thing grow. You give Mark Cuban this let him play with this for a little while? Oh, this man may be in trouble. Because the one thing I will say is I'll go back to what I said last week, why I felt this thing was a major success, and I thought it was going to, going to be before the show. But Cody Reynolds is the son of the American dream Dusty Rose. Let me say that again. Cody is the son of the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Why is that important? Number one, he sat under his father for years and watched his father be one of the top bookers, one of the greatest minds in professional wrestling history. He grew up around men like Ric Flair. His own brother, Dustin. This man, Cody, was there. He's seen it as a child. How a wrestling organization can be put together, how it could be ran, how it could actually make money. And that's the name of the game. These guys have that opportunity right now to do that. They do. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back here on the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling. You're listening. It's 24 7. Angle Kids 24 7. Okay, we are back. Stefan Devereaux, the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. And um, 
were having some technical difficulties because they just told me that they're trying to get in touch with Natalie K. And we can't get in touch with her right now. And they're saying, they're, okay, just do what you do, what you do guys. It, 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 I could talk forever. You know that. So, anyway. I did want to get back into this Cody Rhodes situation here. Cody Reynolds. Because I do. I, there's just something about this that just smells like mm, nothing but roses here. Yes, I'm afraid. I am truly afraid that Vince McMahon will try to do everything in his power to step in and say, nope. You see what he tried to do with Ring of Honor, Madison Square Garden. So now the next step is, okay, let's say they put this together. Where do they take it next? Where do they run next? They proved that they could run and draw in a major market like Chicago, which was incredible. They've proven that. So where do they go next? East Coast, West Coast, down South? I mean, the possibilities are endless. I don't think they should take it overseas. I think they need to keep it in the United States. They have to. Because if they just sit back and look, the wrestling market is not looking too good. If you are just calling it the WWE. If you're just calling the wrestling business the WWE, because a lot of people, they that's what they consider the wrestling business. A lot of people don't even have a clue that there is other organizations out here. A lot of people don't have a clue, which is funny to me, but hey, you got Twitter and Facebook, someone's always posted something about wrestling on there. But these guys have these guys have an opportunity to fill a void that's been there for man. You know, TNA tried to give the WWE a run for his money a couple times, but the WWE didn't go nowhere. They stood there. They didn't run. They stood there. They smacked them back down and said, no. A lot of people blame Dixie Carter for that happening. Vince Russo truly does. And that could be the case. But there's no Dixie Carter here running this company. We have a group of guys who know how to make money. The Young Bucks are promoters in their own right. I mean, these guys truly are promoters. This is what they do. The promoters. And I say they're promoters because, look, they've been able to market themselves the way they have. And look, they're making money. Because the, the Bucks, these guys really truly didn't need, you know, to go to, go to the WWE or they never did. They had their issues uh, with some guys up there. But Cody... You know, we know why he went there when he was a young kid and so forth. But these guys, they got something here. And I really don't want this thing to end. That's why I truly believe, in my opinion, that they're not going to do the the WWE. You know, I'm just going to put a little bow on that conversation. They're not going to the WWE. They're going to make this money. They're going to make this money doing what they do best, and that's promoting themselves. They don't need Vince to promote them. They don't. Like I said about James Ellsworth earlier, these guys do not need help from Vince McMahon. It's nice to collect that check. It's nice to be on TV every week, but it's not guaranteed either. So, Why not take it in your own hands? Make it work on your, I don't want to say on your dime, but your hard work. We're going to see more and more people like doing this. I just got a feeling. More and more people.
So I believe in the end, you love how I keep saying I believe. I believe that this is going to be the best thing that's happened in professional wrestling in 22 years. The last thing I feel that, you know, that happened, the best thing was the NWO. Well, these guys are about to do a real takeover, a real takeover. They, say they don't, have, they don't got to go to the WWE to take over. They're going to take over from the outside. And I'm proud of these guys. You know what? We're going to take another break. And then when we come back, we are going to do Hell in a Cell predictions. Hey, I know. Hell in a Cell. Yeah, I know. People really, you're really excited about that. I know, I know. We'll be right back here on the Deborah Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Angry Kids 24 7 Radio Network. Let's go. You're listening. Kids 24 7 Radio. Kids 24 7 Radio. And we are back. Stefan Devereaux, the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, here on Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. And, um, yeah. And it's a shame because I, I don't want to say that, um, I forgot about it because I didn't. The problem is, it's not really a good card. I'm not interested in his card. The card I'm interested in happened last week. It was called All In. Yeah, that was the card I was interested in. I'm still talking about it. You see this, right? Still talking about All In. But we got Hell in the Cell Sunday. <laughs> hey, the WWE, I love you guys to death. But, man. Some issues. I'm more, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not that, yeah, yeah because I, I think I would rather talk about Meek Mill, Meek Mill and Drake, you know, reuniting on the stage last night in Boston than the WWE Hell in a Cell. Uh, that, I, and that's that's a shame. That, that that's that's a shame. That, that that that's a shame. That is a shame because it, it's just uh, man. Hell in a Cell used to be one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year for the WWE. And let me tell you why I'm not happy about this one. And let's start with Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns. Why am I not happy with it? I mean, there's one match that I'm very interested in seeing. I can't wait to see this match. Why am I not happy about this match? What's the point of having... The the Hell in a Cell match was made so you can end a few. These guys just started. They just started. So where are you taking this to now, WWE? Where are you taking this feud? It just makes no sense. Where are you taking this feud, WWE? Please. So you're going to start this thing in a hell in a cell? Yeah, we know they had beef for, you know, on and off, but come on. And then you made it dumb, like I said you would do. You screwed this up. Instead of turning the shield, heels. What did you do? You turned you turn Braun Strowman into a heel. And I had some idiot Mark fans who had the audacity to argue with me and tell me Braun Strowman was already a heel. If you listen to Braun Strowman, the reaction that he got whenever he came out and watched him work, he was not a heel. Not to laugh and not to to, to act like it it didn't make a difference to me. (sighs) They tell me to calm down. But let's be honest. Let's be, ask yourself why. In the right mind would they do this? And ask yourself this again. Is Vince McMahon, is he just, (sighs) is Vince McMahon, Truly trying to kill his company. Because the things that they should do, they don't. And the things that they never should do, they do it. And it just, it boggles the minds of wrestling fans like myself. (laughs) 
We don't get it. We're sitting back watching this crap like, man, what the? Exactly. I don't even want to do the predictions for Hell in a Cell. Why? Because it's... (sighs) One time Vince McMahon came on television and said, we are not going to insult your intelligence. Vince McMahon, you lied. You lied. You lied. You may not be, you may not have done it then. When you came and made that statement because you had somebody who was writing those words for you, a guy who should be there now, but egos will keep him out of the WWE forever. But you lied. You are insulting our intelligence. And it baffles me. Why would you continue to do this? Because you are starting a football league. And you know without the WWE fan base, your football league will not survive. So why are you continuously killing off your fan base? You lose. Viewers every week, Mr. McMahon. You are losing viewers every week because of this crap. You had a piece of steak in front of you, and you chose a hot dog. (sighs) Anyway, who cares who wins, Braun or Roman? It ain't going to make a daggone difference because something change, will change next week. They had so much promise after SummerSlam, so much potential, and they destroyed it. Took two weeks. They, they destroyed it. Predictions, <laughs> I will give you a few. I do, pre- I do predict that Alexa Bliss will regain her, yeah, her Raw Women's Championship. Yeah, I love Alexa. See, Alexa's a great wrestler. I mean, she's really good. She's awesome. And then she's going to go on to beat up on Trish Stratus next month, who had the nerve, the audacity to disrespect Alexa Bliss like that. But we won't talk about that. We'll talk about that next month. I also like uh, the Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy match. Man, that's going to be a good one. Um, I like Randy Orton. Uh, truly, I like Randy. Uh, the mixed tag match with Brie and Bella, uh, Brie Bella ver- and uh, Daniel Bryan versus The Miz and Maurice. I, yeah, of course, I love The Miz. Um, I mean, there's really, I mean, I really don't like, okay, well, I do, I, I, there's another match I'm looking forward to, and that's Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles, that rematch. That's going to be awesome. I think these guys are just incredible workers, people you know, have their opinion about Samoa Joe, but, you know, I just think he's one of those those dudes who make me want to watch wrestling. Um, just because I'm a businessman and, you know, I want to give you Roman Reigns or Braun Strowman. Braun will become the WWE champion tonight. Or, excuse me, the Raw Universal champion tonight. I don't want to sell. So, people... I want to thank you for joining us this week here on the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Angry Kids 24-7 Network and 24-7 Radio Network. And don't forget, check us out on Blogspot, um, our Blogspot account, uh, Angry Kids 24-7 uh, Radio dot blogspot dot com. I want to thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week here on the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling. You're listening to Angry. It's 24-7.